Welcome back guys, it's craft time. In today's video, I'm going to take you along with me on taking an item that I had thrifted, just this old sign, and turning it into a brand new piece of decor. I'm very excited about this piece and I can't wait to share. Let's go ahead and get started. The materials that I begin with, again, is this sign. It's originally a Hobby Lobby piece that I was able to get at a really decent price and I had a vision for it and I'm going to see if I can make it come to life. To do that, I wanted to make some faux shiplap and I was able to pick up some balsa wood from my local craft store. I'm going to be using black acrylic paint, white chalk paint, white wax to help seal in my chalk paint, uh, my clear matte Rust-Oleum spray paint, and not pictured, uh, my hot glue gun, some E6000. I have this six inch wreath and then some leftover greenery from another project that I was working on. To begin, I started with taking off the sticker from the back and removing the metal wall hanger from the back. You can leave this on. I did this so my piece would sit flat, but also so I wouldn't get any paint on the metal. To begin, I took my black acrylic paint and I gave the entire piece a good coat. I did not do that on the face of my painting at, sorry, of my picture at first because it was going to be covered up and I didn't think that I needed to. However, a little bit later, I found out that I really did want to do that to give it a little bit of depth and let that black shine through in between my pieces of shiplap. I went ahead and painted the back of my piece. This is completely optional. If you're doing it for yourself at home, I don't think it's necessary. However, if you're going to be doing a piece that you want to resell or fix up to give to someone else, I suggest you just take the extra five minutes and give it a nice good coat um, and a once over. That way your entire piece looks cohesive and a little bit more professional. After I did that, I took my piece outside and sprayed it with my clear matte spray paint. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to be putting chalk paint over top of it and it's just going to help ensure that that black is set and the chalk paint and the regular paint aren't going to mix together and cause a muddy color like my white chalk paint turning gray. Once I was done with that, I took the balsa wood and I went ahead and measured how big my pieces are going to need to be. That way they can sit into the frame comfortably. I want it to be semi-tight, but not too tight to where I can't get it in because I will be gluing it and I need to be able to get it in smoothly without getting glue everywhere. So I just cut the number of pieces that I needed and since I didn't have enough to do like complete full pieces, instead of having one piece that was partial at just the top or just the bottom, I put the full pieces into the middle and then measured from the top and the bottom and cut two separate pieces. That way it was more centered with partial pieces on the top and the bottom. That again is a personal preference. I just think it's a little nicer for the eye um, whenever you're looking at it. So after I did that, I kind of laid them out, played around with them just to make sure that they lined up, that I liked the way they looked. And then that's when I realized, oh, I think I wanna paint that underneath black to give it that deeper dimension so I could see that black coming through, especially because I knew I would be painting it white. However, I will say I really like the way that the natural wood color looks with the black frame. I think you would be completely fine if you wanted to stop with your painting there. I think it would have looked great too. While that was drying, I went ahead and made my wreath. So I have this little six inch wreath and all I did was take the greenery that I had and I pulled it apart to where I had the each individual um, piece of greenery instead of like an entire stem, just the little pieces of green. I just hot glued one piece down and then I hot glued where the stem was down on top of that. So then where that stem was down on top and I just overlapped it um, over, over the entire thing to get a nice circle and just let it go with the shape of the wreath but then let the pieces of greenery that kind of lay over the edge just do what they want to do. And it's simple as that. I didn't paint the wreath um, any colors. I liked that natural color and I thought that that would go really good with the greenery, especially butted up against the white once we were done. So I sat that aside and now that my acrylic paint was dry, I went ahead and pulled out my E6000, which is basically a type of super glue, and my hot glue gun. 
the E6000 is going to ensure that that is not going to go anywhere. The hot glue gun is going to ensure that it doesn't go anywhere temporarily. Um, it would also work for long term. However, I just want to be very certain of that, especially because I'm going to be attaching that wreath to it. I want to make sure the weight of that wreath isn't just going to pull it off. So what I did is I put the E6000 all over it and then on the sides I did a strand of the hot glue gun. That way I know that whenever I put it down it's going to be adhered with the hot glue immediately but then it would give that E6000 time to set without it moving on me while I'm finishing up this project at all. So I did that with all of my pieces. I left a tiny gap in between because if you think about shiplap, you know it's not perfectly even and that's what gives it that nice rustic like farmhousey look. So I put all of those down and then I went ahead and got my chalk paint out. Now for the first layer of chalk paint, I just took it straight from the, um, from the tub. I am using Art Mines white chalk paint. It says simply white. I found this at Michael's um, in an decent sized tub and I have a chalk paint brush that I'm using and I just kind of slapped it on made sure it had a nice um, coating for the first one I didn't worry about it really being too pretty because I knew that I would have to go over it again regardless so I did that for the first one I let that dry really nicely um, I did end up using my hair dryer just to kind of speed the process along which you can totally do it just makes it a little easier and a little quicker process after that was completely dry, I came back in with my second coat. And for the second coat, I did add a little bit of water to my paint just to get a really good glide. Now you can either do this by adding water to your paint, but make sure you put it into a separate container. So I just poured a little bit into a bowl, added a little bit of water, mixed it together really well. And all it does is just kind of <clears throat> water it down to where it will glide on a little better, give you more even coverage and make it look a little smoother with less brush strokes. You can do this also just by dipping your paintbrush into water on the side. Um, you want to make sure it's not just dripping off, just kind of dap it on a paper towel or something and you'll just feel a difference. When it's dry, your paintbrush will kind of get caught a little. It won't glide as easily. Whenever you have that good water and moisture, it will just slide right down with no problem and you'll see how it covers a little more evenly and looks really well. After that dried completely, I grabbed a baby wipe, which you can use a baby wipe, you can wet a paper towel, you can use a wet rag, and did a wet distress on this piece. With the wet, wet baby wipe, all I did was kind of put it on my finger on the hard edges of this piece, so around the frame, in any place where there's a hard edge or a good piece of texture, I took that and I rubbed it down until that white paint would go away and you would see that black paint removed. So, like I said earlier, I sealed that black paint in. This is another reason why I did that. If I were to rub on this without sealing that black paint, I would be able to easily remove the black paint too and see back down to that original color, which is not what I wanted. So, sealing in my base layer um, or my base coat just allows me to distress this where I want to without having to worry about taking off too much or messing up the piece. So I did that and I just distressed. The harder you push, the more paint will come off. It'll give it a heavier distress look. And the lighter you push, the less will come off. So it's just kind of preference on what you like. And don't worry if you do take too much off, you can always paint more back on. So don't stress out about it. Play around with it, see what you like. Um, and then just go until you're happy with it. Once I was finished with that and then the kind of wet parts of the paint from the wet baby wipe, dried back up. I got myself a little cloth and the Waverly white wax and I sealed in my chalk paint. To do this I just put a little bit on my rag that I was using and I just rubbed it in. So I just would go along, find, find an area, rub it in and then I flipped mine to like a clean part of the rag and then wiped it again to try to make sure there was no residue and that it was rubbed in really well. Um, I didn't have any issues with the chalk paint that I was using coming off with the wax. I know sometimes that can happen, but it seemed to work really well for me. I did the entire piece. I did all the way around my frame and including my faux shiplap. And I think it looks really good. It took that like really bright white and kind of toned it down a bit and made it look a little more aged, which I think looks really great. And you are more than welcome to stop there. 
The reason why I continued on is because whenever you use a wax like that, you're supposed to reapply it over time because it can wear off and that's what's going to protect your chalk paint and keep it in place. So I decided to take it one step further. I already have my Rust-Oleum clear mat. So I took it outside and I gave it a spritz um, from every direction to make sure I hit the entire thing just to adhere it a little bit better and make sure everything's going to stay in place because I do plan on selling this to someone else. And when I do that, I want to make sure that I give them a good quality product that's not just going to scratch up and uh, mess up, you know, very easily. After that was nice and dry and good and set, which the great thing about that Rust-Oleum spray paint that I use, it is a quick dry, so it doesn't take hardly any time. So I took it back and I hot glued my wreath. So I just laid my wreath down and kind of played around with where I want it to be. In this case, I wanted it just to be center. Um, if you added, you know, more embellishments to it or any wording or anything, you can play around with the positioning. But for this case, I didn't, I wanted to keep it nice and clean. I just hot glued it. I put a very good amount of hot glue around the ring and just put it down in the middle. And that's pretty much it. I love the way it turned out. Like I said, I liked the way that it was looking when it was the black and natural colors, but I, there's just something about the white and the black distress that's going on that I really, really like. It's very eye-catching. It's very clean and crisp um, with a little piece of greenery. So without further ado, I will show you the piece. So I put the, the hanger back on, but this is it. Just a nice, simple piece that just will add a little bit of freshness into your area wherever you're choosing to use it. Uh, you can use it, this particular one, you can hang it up because it does have the hanger or because this frame is nice and wide, you can just set it down wherever you want to use it. Um, this is a, I feel like a very easy, great idea if you have an old frame laying around. The great thing about the balsa wood is that it's so thin so it's like, you know, so if you have just like a small frame, you still should be able to put this down in there. If you have an old frame you don't know what to do with or, you know, you pick something up somewhere, this is a great way to get that shiplap look without actually spending the money on wood, especially right now because wood is not cheap. Um, so yeah, this is my little hack on what I used. Again, I think it looks great. Um, you can see, if I bring you in a little closer, you can actually see some of the grainage. So it looks like it has that wood grain to it. But then you can see here, like where I put the black underneath, it really shows up really well um, and gives it a little bit more dimension and shows that it, you know, there's like different slats. So I'm very happy with this. I think it's a great little hack. I think it's super cute little piece of farmhouse decor that that you can do you can do it give it a try if you're happy with how this turned out let me know in the comments if you like it give me a thumbs up i really appreciate you guys coming back here and crafting with me and learning with me and letting me share with you little tips and tricks that i've learned along my journey and yeah i will go ahead and take you in for a closer look thank you so much and i will see you next time